<laughs> uh, needless to say, Drew is here already this morning. What's up, good people? Welcome, 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 welcome to a uh, hump day edition of Morden Scone. It is a hump day, and we are presented by Boudreaux's. Bloody Mary Mix, Margarita Mix, pick it up at great retailers around the greater Baton Rouge area or online at BoudreauxMix.com. Val, you are the lucky winner. First out the shoot this morning. What's up, oh my, my friend? God. Elmo Ducks, indeed. Drew is watching some Elmo Ducks today. If y'all wouldn't mind hitting the share. Oh oh Elmo Ducks. <laughs> We're already at it. Aunt Linda, good morning. Everett Himmel, good morning. Very glad to see you all here so far. Uh, Brandon, Charlie, Jeremy Morgan. What's up, guys? Kyle Gallo. Good to see everybody there. Hope you all having a good morning so far. Uh, good day yesterday on AFR if you all missed it. Daddy's car. Daddy's car? Well, no, you're going to go with Mimi later today. Mimi is going to come over and take you to... Ability. Abilities. Grandma. Well, if you ask her, maybe she'll take you to Fresh Market. But you better ask her. You okay? Um, man, what an interview yesterday with Hugh Freeze. If y'all missed it, I uh, got a couple of write-ups. One at Gridiron Now, one at the Action Network. Uh, posted them both here on the Facebook page and on Twitter. Uh, you can go listen to the audio of it if, uh, if you have it on the podcast. Just a really good insight, man, from a... a just a brilliant offensive guy uh, talking about, you know, when you kind of start to like, like get into his mind of th- things that he would never answer while he was coaching. You know, like how are you? What I asked him, like, how are you able to score against Bama? You know, he went into some detail. Like, um, you know, we decided on third down we were going to go tempo, and we just weren't going to let them sub to get their exotic. Uh, packages in there to, to rush us. I said, I, so I didn't care if it was third and eight. We were just going to run up third and eight tempo, quick slant. If that's what it had to be, it was just go execute it. We just made up our mind that's what we were going to do. Um, and then talking about how, how he broke the field. It was like three fields for the quarterback and how he knew he could get a safety into the box to create a one-on-one. For, it's just really, really smart stuff. Anyway, it was fun. So if you missed that, Hugh Freeze interviews up. Um Hopefully, Steve Ensmeyer listens to it uh, whenever before else she plays Bama. Frema. Fresh Market! Mm. Or Frema. But, but go to Calandro's I because Calandro's has Boudreaux's and Fresh Market does not. Fresh Market. Take rocks, Fresh Market. Sorry, Fresh Market. Or maybe you want to play ball, Fresh Market, and start carrying Boudreaux's, Fresh Market. You carry Boudreaux's, then maybe I'll start uh, promoting your stuff. In the meantime, I'll tell everybody go to Calandro's. Because they got Boudreaux's and they got the best whiskey selection in town. Uh, let's see. Blake, good morning. Josh Grabois. Soggy Thibodeau. Who? It's not raining here yet in the BR. Uh, Mark McCarter. Miles didn't practice. That was interesting, man. I'm curious what's up with that. Um, yeah, so we can get in some of that. So, practice report from yesterday. Miles, Miles Brennan did not practice. And by the way, Fresh Market. By the way, uh, Mark, Miles Brennan, Miles, M-Y-L-E-S. Uh, the M-I-L-E-S is uh, the former coach, Les Miles. Just an FYI. Uh, M-Y-L-E-S is Miles Brennan. But, uh, My- so Miles Brennan did not practice. I did not get an explanation as to why. Um, but he, he was there. He was at practice. He just didn't practice. Um, also, uh, we talked yesterday about Donovan Campbell. Moving over to defensive line on Monday's practice. Well, yesterday he was back at offensive line. So that's interesting. I don't know if they were just giving him a look to see if uh, you know if he might like it, so he might provide some depth. Uh, Ed Ogeron is on the SEC Coaches Teleconference today at 10 a.m. Central. So no doubt he'll be asked about that. And then he's got his coaches show tonight, So uh, which you can hear on Eagle 98.1. Daddy. Daddy's car. Very good. Uh, two other sort of tidbits from yesterday I found interesting. Um as we're kind of looking at that offensive line shuffle. So Campbell was back on the offensive side. Uh, no Sadiq Charles, no Adrian McGee. 
And typically, coaches have a rule, man, if you're not out there by Wednesday, you're not playing. So it will be a muy interesante today to see if Sadiq Charles and or Adrian McGee are back out there practicing. So McGee, you all know the backstory. Hurt his knee against – he was starting right tackle. Hurt his knee against Miami. Ed Ogeron said he was out two to three weeks. He missed the next three games. Monday, Ed said he was questionable. McGee practiced Monday. He was not there yesterday. So I don't know if he had a setback or whatever the case may be. Again, Ed will answer those this morning. But Elmo Ducks. Um, but, you know, I think they can get by without Adrian McGee. The one that – as we've all seen at this point, is just like super tough to replace. Is uh, is Sadiq Charles? You know the. Um, I don't. I don't know another way to say it. It's just when he's out, there's a domino effect because you've got to take. You know, either Deculus and move him from right to left, or you know, put Treora in, who's going to need help, which means you take the help away from Deculus at right to put it on on the left side. You know, there's just a there's that trickle down effect. Hey, is your backpack beeping? Let me see. Backpack. Five, two, one. Okay, you're free. You're free. All right. Who's backpack? Um. So anyway, point is, there's this trickle down effect, right? When Sadiq isn't there, and it affects both sides of the line. Plus, you know, Chase and Hines making his first start. You'd love to have him between Cushenberry and Sadiq. Backpack. Excuse me, thank you. Okay, we'll see you later. Uh, so anyway, a couple of tidbits there from, from yesterday. Uh, Everett, good morning. Let's get to your comments, questions, concerns. Let's see if we can... Why is this not working? I hate this computer. <gasps> you can't have that. That's how daddy controls on my ducks. Okay. What's the matter, bud? You watching on my ducks? Mm, okay. Uh, Mike Bucklin. Hello. Buckelin. Bucklin. 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 Uh, Steven Johnson. Good morning. Justin Huckins. Good morning. Alvino. Good morning. Ronnie. What's up, Deke? Uh, Charlie Cavell, UCBO, what's up man, uh, Jason, Bobby, Robert, good to see everybody here, Mikel, good morning, Josh Bertucci, Miles Bay transfer at years end, uh, so that's an interesting question man, I don't think so, uh, he has said, and his dad, you know, his dad said at the beginning of the year, um, backpack. that he was sticking around, backpack, now maybe... Maybe that was just for this year, and maybe he does leave at the end of the season. Um, but obviously, you know, there's so much talk right now about the new redshirt rule and the four games, and you're seeing a lot of, uh, like, for example, Kelly Bryant at Clemson. The um, the uh, the freshman quarterback, Trevor Lawrence, has beaten him out, and so Kelly Bryant's mispracticed the last two days. So this thought like Kelly Bryant might take advantage of the the tr- the uh, the redshirt rule. Did you say poo poo? Poo poo. Poo poo. Yeah, poo poo? Five six. Five six? <coughs> At least he came and let me know. That's very good. I mean, not that I couldn't tell. You know what I mean? Um, uh, I guess it's just a question of like, you know, so ideally, so if you're at Ogeron, if you're LSU, the ideal situation is. Man, you keep Burrow for eight, for eighteen and nineteen. You redshirt Brennan this year, and then you've got Brennan for twenty twenty one in his fourth and fifth seasons. The question is, does Brennan want to wait four years to play? Um, and maybe his answer is no. Uh, maybe he does leave, but it's hard for me to imagine him leaving now, like at this point in the season. Um, Drew said, "Did you ask Q if he would ever coach with Coach O again?" I did not. We didn't get. We had such a limited time. There were things I had to get to. And and for what it's worth, Drew, I, I know the answer to that. I know that 
that you freeze would, I know Ed Ogeron wouldn't. So, uh, it, at least I've been led to believe that, that Ed would not have Hugh back on his staff. So, uh, which I think is short-sighted. He's an awesome offensive coach. But I also believe that Hugh Freeze is going to be head coach again and should be head coach again. Absolutely. Uh, I mean, everybody makes mistakes in their personal life. I, I, I'm just nobody to judge. That's that's for him and his family and his God and all. You know, I just that ain't for me to judge. Um, you could look at the NCAA stuff, uh, and that might scare off some schools. Um, Man, like his penalty, the, the one year show cause as a head coach was minimal. I and mean, that expires after this year. And, you know, you've seen coaches with far more severe accusations against them get back. I mean, uh, Bruce Pearl had a two year show cause. He got another gig in the SEC. Um, uh, I don't think other coaches had a show cause that got back in. Um, you know, but there's been coaches with scandals I've got back in. Larry Stacey, Bobby Petrino. It was a long list, man. Um, Carrie. By the way, so Carrie is the one who's commented there, is the one who helped uh, connect me with you, Free. So I'm very, very grateful, Carrie. Thank you very much, man. I said, Free's one of the few coaches who could beat Saban with a non dual threat quarterback. Saw why yesterday I've listened to the interview, how to beat Saban tempo. It's true. Um, but even. Even still, man, like, Bo Wallace and Chad Kelly are the two quarterbacks that he had that beat Saban's teams. And while maybe those guys weren't, like, true dual-threat quarterbacks, those guys could make plays with their feet, you know. They they could move the pocket. Um, that game in 16 when they won in Tuscaloosa. Um, some of the biggest plays in that game were Chad Kelly making with his feet when they, when they iced the game. Uh, I remember watching that game thinking, damn, that guy's awesome. Um, Jason Reber, what's up? Trey Dykes, what's up? Good to see you there, man. Sounds like chair moving time. He was moving around in there. Hey, Josh Keithley, what's up, man? Shouldn't you be saving lives instead of watching uh, Morning Scone? Let's see. How strong will the offense be if everyone can return to Georgia? Um, so, And Alvino asked any news on Ingram. Alvino, there's no news on Ingram, man. That's, that's literally just a matter of when the DeSoto, Texas judicial system can move that th- thing through their investigation and, you know, if they decide to prosecute or whatever the case may be, man. But that's not, that's not anything LSU can, can handle. So, you know, it's not that dissimilar from the Shady's thing in 2011 with Jordan Jefferson and those guys where, um, you know, just, it just dra- started in August and dragged all the way into October. I think Kentucky was the game when, when Jordan came back. Um, you missed the first half of the season or thereabouts. But, uh, man, if, if everyone's back, if, like, everyone's back, and you've got Sadiq Charles, Garrett Brumfield, which I don't know, I don't know the extent of Garrett's injury, so don't let me suggest that he might be back because I don't know. You know, you get Cushenberry, Lewis, uh, or Ingram. I mean, you, you, if, the, the problem you have is if you get, Ingram back, where do you put him? Because you're not putting Lewis on the bench. I mean, I guess theoretically if Brumfield's out, then that's easy. You can move Lewis to left guard, and then Ingram goes in at right guard, and Cushenberry stays at center, and then that's a that's a pretty salty unit, man. So, for sure. I don't know, man. The, the, the Brumfield thing just looked bad. So I hope he's back, man, but look bad. The wild man, Tyler D. What's up? Uh, Jeremy Fontana, curious, what's the backpack beep for... Precaution. Oh, no, man. So that's it. Drew has a feeding tube. Like he gets fed. Uh, he's got a port in his stomach. That's how he gets fed. So, um, went. So there's a. Show y'all. So like this tube. He's got. A, he's got a port with an extension on it. This clips into the extension, and the backpack is actually made for a tube. A tube baby. So like this pump. Uh, you set a rate and a dose for how much formula he gets and then it pumps that into his feeding tube over that amount of time. So it, so to get, you know, what amounts, this is a Pediasure. So he gets Pediasure, um, 
like I do that over 45 minutes. So like when you think of one of those little like eight ounce or six ounce cans of Pediasure, it takes them 45 minutes for breakfast on in this feeding tube because that pump. Uh, so when you hear that beep, that just means it's it's over. Like he's gotten his full dose. So then I gotta go grab it and turn it off. And then yeah, you put the backpack on him because if not, he just he would walk, and you know the two he'd pull the tube, <laughs> he pull the tube right out. Um, uh, let's see, Darren. Good morning, Coach Ken. Good morning, uh, Neil Jackson. What's up, man? Hope you're doing well. Uh, do, 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 do. Nancy Vaught. Good morning. Vote Vaught. Voight, Stephen Beach, good morning, um, Armand, how will, he will be at, uh, at Bama, oh, Freeze, hey man, Mike Loxley's doing a pretty good job calling plays, it's so funny how people have this big question about Mike Loxley, Mike Loxley calling plays at Bama this year, because his New Mexico teams were so bad, I'm like, he never had Jalen Hurts, and Devontae Smith, and Damian Harris, and Najee Harris, and anyway, um, I, Maybe Freeze. See, the thing with Freeze is like he. I guess theoretically he could go there and be a, like an analyst or, a, you know, a quarterbacks coach or something if they have a spot for him. Uh, but he could be a head coach, and I, I don't know why. Like, a, if you're a a group of five school, even a power five school, like why wouldn't you hire Hugh Freeze? Hey, what? Can you tell me what you want? Tell me what you want. Oh my God. You want Elma Ducks? Tell me what you want. All right. Back to y'all's comments, y'all. Appreciate y'all for being here, man, as always. Uh, let's see. Let's see, let's see, let's see, let's see, let's see. Oh, man. Uh, so I'd be curious to see what happens with... Um, I'd be curious to see what happens with Freeze next year, man. Um, I'd love to see him at LSU. I just don't think that's realistic. I don't think he has to go hire him. I think... Uh, obviously, Hugh worked for for Ed in Oxford, um, but I think when Hugh was head coach at Ole Miss and you know, Ed being at LSU and you know recruiting for LSU, they probably just had some some recruiting battles and probably just a little bit of at least what 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 you want to come see Daddy? Hey, can you use your words, please? Manamana. Does Drewby want to wear the hat? Hat. Hat. Oh, is it daddy wear the hat? Moo. Moo? You moo. 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 Let's not hold that because what's going to happen is you're going to push the, the Hulu button or the Netflix button and then you're going to fuss because your show is going to be gone. Hey, don't you touch that. Don't you touch that. Hey, don't you touch that. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Daddy will fix it. Thank you. Thank you for the help with that. That was really helpful of you. Thanks. Not really. Excuse me. Excuse me. Well, you go over here and knock this stuff over, boy. Go over here and knock this stuff over, boy. Well, that's a good story. Who is that? Drew. Drew. It is Drew. Okay, we'll put it back on Daddy. You have to be able to see. Okay. Okay. Go watch them ducks. Okay. Uh, Jeremy says, hopefully Giles can make a few plays this week. I'd like to see D. Anderson get a few more as well. I'll tell you this much, man. Um... I haven't looked at Vegas's projected total for this game. Let's see if I can find it real quick. Let's see if I can find the total for this game. I'm curious what Vegas thinks that Ole Miss can score. I'm a duck. I'm a duck. I'm a duck. I'm a duck. Elma ducks. So Odd Shark is projecting LSU 42 to 26 in the game. So total 68. I mean, 
Like, I wouldn't be surprised if Ole Miss scores 27, 26. I'm a duck. I would, I'm a duck. I'm is Emma Ducks not on? Oh, sorry. What is that? It's not Emma Ducks. Sorry. There it is. Anyways, I mean, it's like you, know, you just saw Tech put up 21. Like, could Ole Miss score 26, 31? Yeah, I mean, they could. With with those receivers and with some of the issues LSU's had opposite Greedy. I mean, even if like even if you put Greedy – like, I don't think they'll do this because they, they've shown in the past that, that they won't just move Greedy with one guy. Like, even if they just told Greedy, all right, go blanket A.J. Brown. Well, fine. Well, you still got DeMarcus Lodge. Uh, you still got D.K. Metcalf. I mean, you've still got mismatches where, like, one-on-one, their guys are better. So, you know, and Scotty Phillips, he's – think about Scotty. He's a running back. He's a former Juco guy. Hugh Freeze talked about him yesterday. He's made them actually respectable running the ball. Backpack. <laughs> so, um – I mean, Ole Miss's defense is, is atrocious. They're they're just terrible. Um, so I mean, LSU should be able to have their way and score forty five if they need to. But could Ole Miss score thirty? You know, if LSU turns the ball over, could you be in a one score game in the fourth quarter and you're holding your breath? Yeah, could. Um, anyway, Johnny Marchese, good morning, Marchese. Blake Devillier, what's your take on Giles not seeing the production? You're not seeing the production, Blake, because there, there's been none. Kid's got like one catch all year. Um, I just think that he's a. It's you know, and this was my concern with him that I said all along when everyone was hyping him and he was on you know, the Bolitnikoff watch list. And I say, can we pump the brakes and see if this kid can get off a jam against an SEC corner? Um, I think he was he was a system receiver at Tech, where you know you spread the field in empty sets and it's basically just take two steps, turn around, the ball's out as soon as it's snapped, and then you're catching it, and you're trying to make a guy miss and getting upfield. It's just a, you know, where the passing game is an extension of the running game, and uh, that's not what LSU does. And they expect guys to be able to, to, to get off of jams and press coverage and be able to, you know, out-muscle physical corners and find you know, soft spots in the zone and make catches. And when they have, tr- like, tried to get him involved, he's dropped the ball. I mean... You know, the problem is he came in, and I've said this before, man, but, you know, last year when he was red and the coaches, Ed Ogeron included, kept calling him the best receiver on the team, saying nobody could guard him. Well, then everybody got their hopes up. And they give him the number seven jersey when Shark leaves, and then it's just more expectation for the kid. And I don't know what they saw at practice, but, you know, every time we got to watch, it was like he didn't do anything. He didn't do anything in scrimmages. He didn't do anything in in the spring game. It's like, what are y'all seeing? I mean, it was you know, Justin Jefferson took a screen, made a guy miss, and took a, took a, you know eighty yards of the house, ninety yards of the house in the spring game. Anyway, I hope he comes around, man. But it's just he's not one of your three best. He wouldn't be on the field for me right now. I mean, you got I would have Justin Jefferson, D. Anderson, Jamar T- Chase. Those are the three best receivers, and somewhere in there, I'd mix in Stephon Sullivan too. I mean, that's that's my top four, and then if I'm going to my next, my sixth, it's I would go like you have Giles, Terrace Marshall, and Derek Dillon next, and Dillon can't catch, and Giles hasn't shown the ability, and Marshall's young, so it's like just you know, pick which of that group you want. But are you really excited about getting down to your fifth receiver? Jimmy, what's up? Uh, Jeremy said forty-five twenty-seven. I could see that. I could see that score playing out. Brian Burrell, good morning. Stephen Miller, Vashon Jones, Brad Ferran, good morning. Uh, Trevi said, I think Coach O should hire him because they can say, here is the offense that can score on Bama. I agree. Look, man, I agree with you, Trevi. Now, I also think Hugh Freeze is going to be head coach. but um, And he's not going to go be a coordinator somewhere. Like, someone's going to hire him to be a head coach um, when the sh- when a show causes up this year. Um, but I, I, I don't. I mean, I'll put it to you this way. 
if tomorrow I said to you, you could have Steve Ensminger as your quarterback or as your coordinator, Hugh Freeze, who would you pick? I think the answer is easy and obvious. And also is an illustration of why there are people critical of the Steve Ensminger hire. Not that Steve's a bad offensive mind. Not that it's, you know he can't do do the job, but was he the best, like the best guy for the job? Probably not. Uh, Ole Miss quarterback can make plays with his feet plus a great arm. Yeah, Jordan Ta'amu. Hey, people forget, man, that game changed last year. And, like, Ole Miss did zero with Shea Patterson against LSU last year. Like, couldn't move the ball at all. When Patterson got hurt and Ta'amu went in, that's when they started scoring. And maybe it was just because they had scouted him. I, I really don't know. But, um, but he's dynamic, man. Now, they only scored seven against Bama. So, my guess is, you know, uh, Dave Aranda will be dissecting that film a lot this week. Akeem, how do you feel about Fulton so far? You think about Fulton as like... Fulton and Kelvin Joseph. Like, both guys... When you watch them get beat, it's not one of those things where they're running 8, 10 yards behind the ball. You know, like, it's not like they just... They got beat on a double move and they were toast. Or... You know, they, they made a wrong read. There was a miscommunication. The guy's wide open. Now, like, you, you haven't seen that with LSU this year. When Fulton and Joseph got beaten, they just, they're, they're in position. Receiver just makes a play. So, um, I mean, I, w- I would just like to see Christian Fulton and Kelvin Joseph make more plays on the ball. Like, not just be in position, but when you're in position, man, get your hand up, knock the ball away, make a pick. I mean, that's why that's why greedy is what he Apple. is, man. Peekaboo. Apple. Peekaboo. Apple. Apple. What are you doing? What? What do you need me to do, Bubba? What? Uh. What do you need? Apple. Is that peekaboo? Peekaboo. I don't know what you want, baby. Hang on, y'all. Peekaboo. Sam Peekaboo, y'all don't know what he wants. He's back and running here again and grab me. Comes to Abu again. He wants to peek, but I don't know what that is. Um, anyway. Only once has LSU beaten Ole Miss by double digits this century at Tiger Stadium. That was last year. Steven, bro. That's a rando-ass number, bro. <laughs> Only once has LSU beaten Ole Miss by double digits this century at Tigers. Like, that's a lot of qualifiers, dude. Backpack. That's like... That's like saying, man, this this pitcher, this hitter is batting 400 against left-handed pitchers in day games at home when the opposing color's primary, team's primary color is blue, and it's not a hard sellout. Home, 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 mama car, mama car. Uh, do 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 do. Hey, and Stephen, last year they played in Oxford. Two years ago was the game at Ole Miss, and Ensminger was interim OC, and that was a game when Fournette had like 180 yards at half. You know what I mean? Sean Walsh, let's see. LSU doesn't want to shoot out. Better be like 21 to 10. I don't think you're getting 21 to 10, bro. We need Rashard Robinson performance from Fulton. Remember him locking up Mike Evans? He sure did, man. 
It was 2013 in the rain in Tiger Stadium. For show. Sure. Show sure enough to. He was a freshman that year, too. Uh, Robbie Landry, good morning. Randy Quinn, I say run him out there one more game against his wet paper bag defense Saturday. If he can't make plays this weekend, bury him on the depth chart. Are you talking about Giles? I, I'm No, I'm done with Giles, man. Like, other guys have played better and deserve those reps. Like, they do. D. Anderson deserves reps. Uh, Justin Jefferson and Jamar Chase, like, they're your best receivers. They deserve those reps. They've played the best. So, I mean... If you go into a four-receiver set or there's a specific play designed to get Giles the ball, okay. But we've seen him drop screens that were designed for him, man. So, I don't know, man. I mean, I get you. I understand your point, but I'd rather reward the guys that are playing well. Like, D. Anderson has been money the last two weeks. Put that kid out on the field. Like, 11 needs to be on the field. He's a, he's a total mismatch, man. Put the 6'6 freak out there. Uh, Lori Prophet, good morning. Devin Steve, don't turn your back on the purple and gold. NWO. What? Uh. Hi. Daddy. Daddy. Car. What? Daddy. Car. Daddy car. Nope, you're gonna go in Mimi's car later, and you're gonna go to abilities, abilities, and see Miss Margaret and. Who else? Baby. Baby, and who else? Yeah. Sarah. You wear the hat? BB's gonna be very happy that you said BB. I see BB. <gasps> I love my boy. Let's see. Got some Baileys in that brew, sir? No, come on, man. And it would be uh, it would be Jameson if I did not Bailey's. Uh, let's see. Say Freeze was your OC. Would he adapt his offense because of Aranda and the D? Um, I don't think you adapt the offense. I think, and remember, th- there were some years at Ole Miss where they had a good defense. I mean, remember the land like the Land Shark defense when you had uh, both Kim Dichies, you had. That's Connor was the safety, um, but they had some dudes. Was that their, what year was that? Was that fourteen or was it fifteen? Uh, I guess it had to be fourteen. That was the year they were top ten when LSU beat them ten to seven. Dude, they had some dudes, man, uh, at Ole Miss on defense. So not every year there were they really bad. Um, anyway. So he, my point is like he can play a complimentary style. Um, Got to stop comparing things to this year's Bama team. They may be the goat by year's end. Yeah, we'll see. They're really good, man. I remember people said the same thing about Oklahoma in two thousand three. It's funny how like history changes, but like we were literally having that conversation about about two thousand three Oklahoma. And people forget like they were averaging set like seventy a game. I mean, they had Heisman Trophy winning quarterback. They had first rounder after first rounder on that defense. Derek Strait. I mean, oh, Drew. What do you want? That's Nilma Ducks. What do you want? P, I don't know what that is, but I know you keep saying P, you, Huh? Fresh market? Take you with me, man. Um, yeah, I want to talk about that for a second. Because Stephen brought up a point, said, you know, the Bam, this Bama team could be, you know, the 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 goat. Uh, so first of all, and I'm not disrespecting uh, Bama because they look awesome. I'm not in any way, you know, downplaying them. But Louisville stinks. Ole Miss's defense stinks. <laughs> and they played Arkansas State. And I think, and A&M's pretty good. But that was at home, and let's not get it twisted and act like 
like A and M's a top five team. Okay, but yes, they're, they're very very good. But if you can start talking about someone as like the greatest team ever. Like, let's see what you do when you get a chance to go play some great teams and how you hold up. Now, maybe, maybe this Alabama team, you know, goes on to win the national championship, which I think they will. Um, and maybe in so doing, they dump truck everybody. You know, maybe they get their chance to take on a, you know, maybe they come to Baton Rouge and they beat LSU by three touchdowns. Play Georgia in the SEC championship game and beat them by, by 21 and then play Ohio State in the national championship game and beat them by, by three touchdowns too. And, and maybe maybe at the end of the year we'll say that, that they were you know, the, the best. Um, you know, I just I have a hard time saying like saying that. they're they're obviously a great football team and I, I think they're the strongest team in, in college football this year by a mile. But to start talking about them historically, like let me let me see you win let me see you beat some good teams first. You know, like, let me see you get through the meat of a schedule and just and rock it. Um, anyway. All right, a couple more. Brad said, what's your take on Foster Morrow? Expected more out of him. He had a knee injury. Uh, nobody talked about it, but he was wearing a knee brace. And we talked about it here a little bit. Uh, Foster was wearing a knee brace, and um, I think he was just fighting through it, man. And this was, this past week was the first time that he played without the knee brace, and he had five targets and four catches. So I think you're going to start seeing more, more fun. Hey, whoa, 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 whoa. Oh, thank you. <laughs> He's carrying the remote. Hey, well, give me the remote. Well, that's your fault. Here, you hit the Netflix button. Well, give me that. Okay. I got it for you, dude. I got you. I got you. It's all good. It's all good. Oh, Lord. All good, Bubba. You want peekaboo? Huh? You want peekaboo? Huh? Peekaboo? Peekaboo. Kid don't even know what he wants anymore. He so this is the Roku remote, and so like he'll grab the remote because he sees me. Do, so and he'll hit like the Netflix button, and so it like opens up Netflix, and so it turns off the whatever movie he's trying to watch or whatever show he's trying to watch. Um, all right, let's see. Stephen Miller talking about the spread. I don't see it being that big of a win. Um, I tend, I tend to agree, Stephen. I, it's something about that team. It can, I just know Ole Miss can score. Like maybe, like maybe it's a one score game, and LSU, LSU does like what they did against Tech, where they put together a couple of scores in the fourth quarter, and it's like it ends up seventeen. But I, but I got you, man. I, I, I agree. I tend to agree about this week, man. That's. Just because I know what Ole Miss has on the outside, and I've watched LSU struggle a little bit. They struggle with Miami's really good receivers. Um, they struggle with Tech, which had some nice players, but nothing like what they're going to see this week. Anyway, we'll see. Uh, Daniel, Andrew, what's up, y'all?